Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a menu GUI on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is come into the game, um, and as you see, we're given this little menu tool right here. Uh, all we have to do is equip the tool, and this menu GUI pops up. Um, and this GUI has all of our different items and all of our different categories. So as you see, I have the drinks category, we have the appetizers, we have all of our different menu categories, and we can navigate through it using these buttons. Um, and once we decide what we want to order, all we have to do is unequip the tool, and the GUI goes away. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually wanna show you how to make it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create our menu tool. So I'm just gonna make a new tool under Workspace, um, and I'm gonna name it Menu, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and under here, I'm just gonna create a new part. I'll name it Handle, I'm gonna make it look like a little, little menu thing. I'm not great at building or design, but I'm sure you guys can make this look great. Just add some kind of design or some kind of tool so that your players actually know that they're holding a menu or that the other player's holding a menu. Um, and just ensure that this is actually named Handle so that the tool will be able to be equipped. Um, so after this, I'm going to drop the menu underneath the starter pack so that the players are given it as soon as they join the game. Um, and I'm going to create a new local script under here named Menu Tool. But of course, you can name this whatever you'd like. Um, and what this script is going to do is it's actually going to open and close our menu GUI. So I'm actually going to set that up now. So I'm going to create a new screen GUI under starter GUI. Um, and I'm going to name it menu GUI. Basically, the way this is going to work is whenever the player equips this tool, we're going to set the enabled property of menu GUI. So if they equip it, we'll set the enabled G property to true. And if they unequip it, we'll set it to false. So this will just create this effect of the menu GUI being open and closed. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hop into our menu tool script. Um, and I just want to grab a few references um, to some of the different objects that we're going to be using. So first thing, I'll grab a reference to the player by saying local player equals game.players.local player. I also want to make a variable for the player GUI, which is where this menu GUI is going to be stored. So I'll say player GUI equals player.player .player GUI. Uh, and I also want to grab reference to this menu tool right here. Um, and of course, I also want to have a reference to the menu GUI itself. So I'll say local menu tool equals script.parent and local menu GUI is equal to player GUI. And we're just going to wait for this menu GUI to appear. So we'll say wait for child menu GUI. After this, it's actually very simple we're going to do from here. We're just going to make sure that when the game starts, the menu GUI is not enabled, so it's not visible. Um, and whenever the tool is actually equipped, we're just going to make that menu come up. So we'll say menu tool, and I'm going to hook into the equipped event of that tool. So whenever it's equipped, we'll connect it to a function. Um, and inside of here, we're just going to run a little bit of code that enables the menu GUI. So we'll say menu GUI dot enabled equals true. So now at this point, we can actually go into the game and just try this out just to see what it does. Uh, if I look under here under players and I find my player, here's the menu GUI. So right now it's disabled. Whenever we equip the menu tool, it enables it and you see the tool comes up in our hand. But when we unequip the tool, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't disable it. So we need to add the code for actually unequipping the GUI too. So we'll say menu tool dot unequipped and I'm gonna connect that to a function as well. And the code we're gonna run in here is just doing the exact opposites right here. So we'll say menu GUI dot enabled equals false. So this will make it so that we're able to equip the tool, unequip the tool, and actually trigger the menu GUI as that happens. So after this, we will actually wanna go about creating our menu GUI. This is a little bit more complex. Um, so I just decided to make this ahead of time and I'm just gonna drop this in. Um, of course, you could create this if you'd like, just make sure you have everything in here named the same things. Um, but if you'd like to, you can also just grab the model in the description. It has everything shown in this video, all the code, all that. Um, just make sure everything's you know put in the same locations, but it might just be easier and then you can customize this later on. So after we have this, I actually wanna set up the code that's going to control these buttons and load in our content to the different menu frames. So I'm gonna create a new local script under menu frame. Um, and I'm just gonna name this menu GUI. Um, and in here is actually gonna be our configuration and it's gonna take that configuration and convert it to frames. So what do I mean by that? Basically the system runs based on a bunch of different frames. So for each menu category like desserts or drinks, um, it's gonna create a new frame 
Um, and then these buttons are actually going to trigger the switch between the frames. So I'll show you exactly what that means. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to get a reference to a few objects. So I'm going to say local sample menu frame, which is this sample one that we created down here, is equal to script.parent.sample menu frame. I'm also going to grab a reference to this menu frames folder right here. So menu frames folder is equal to script.parent.menu frames. Um, and of course, I also want to grab reference to this UI page layout, which is actually driving this whole system. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but they're actually really cool and it's going to make it super easy to set this up. So we'll say local page layout equals menu frames folder dot UI page layout. After this, I just want to start the game by setting this sample menu frames visibility to false, just so that the player can't see it until they actually equip the tool. Um, and now we can actually get into configuring this system. So we can make a custom configuration for this so that we don't just have to create a bunch of frames. We're going to make this data driven through the code. So I'm going to create a new dictionary called menu categories. Um, and in here, we're going to have all of our different menu categories and the items that are in those categories. So for example, maybe my first category is drinks. So I'll say drinks because that's the category name. Um, and I'm going to set that equal to a new array. And then inside of this array, I'm going to have all of the names of my different drinks. So maybe I have drink one, drink two, drink three. We could have as many of these as we want, as long as they're separated by a comma. I mean, the system's just going to create all of these, you know, in the UIs automatically. I um, mean, we could have as many of these too. We could have as many items and we could also have as many categories. So maybe if I copy all of this and I add a comma to it and I put it right underneath, we could maybe make appetizers, right? And we could say appetizer one, appetizer two, appetizer three. We can have as many of these different things as we want. Um, it's just gonna automatically create all of it. Um, so after this, I wanna add a little bit more configuration. Um, basically the way these uh, arrays here work, these dictionaries, is they don't have um, a specified order. Even though we put drinks first and appetizers second, Roblox doesn't know that. So we have to tell Roblox what would actually go first in the menu you know, system, because I don't want my appetizers coming up first if maybe I'd want to you know, the drinks menu coming up first. I want it to be a more logical order for the customers. So I would say local menu categories order equals a new array. Um, and now I'm just going to put these menu categories in this array in the order that I'd like. So I'd like drinks to go first and appetizers to go second. But you can put this in whatever order you want. If you would like appetizers to go first or, you know, maybe you have desserts, any anything that you have in this menu categories uh, dictionary, you can have that go first, second, last. And this is just going to specify the order in which the frames are going to come up and you're going to navigate through them. After this, I want to write some code that's actually going to take this data and use it. It's going to create our different menu frames and allow us to go through them. So I'm going to loop through these menu categories by saying for menu category, comma menu items. So we're going to get each menu category and the items of that category in pairs menu categories since menu categories is a dictionary. Um, and for that we're just going to run some code. So for each one we're going to get this and we're going to get this and then we're going to run some code with that data. So the first thing I want to do is just clone our menu frame right here. We can design this however we want. So, you know, I maybe if I want to set the background color or something different, I can do it however I'd like. And I want it to be able to clone this exact one that I design um, just so that I don't have to you know, specify a bunch of properties every time. So I'll say local menu frame is equal to a clone of the sample menu frame by calling the clone method on that. Um, and now I'm just going to grab some references to the different objects under here. So I'll say menu frame title label is equal to the title label, which would be this one right here that has like the name of the category. I would say maybe local menu items box is equal to the menu frame dot menu items box. So this is where the items are actually going to be placed in. This is where we're going to see them. Uh, I'm also going to grab references to the next button and the back button, um, just because we're going to have to get whenever those are clicked. So we'll say local menu frame uh, dot next button. And I'm going to do the same thing with the back button. So local back button equals menu frame dot back button. All right, so now that we have this, we can set a few properties of these variables that we created of these objects. Um, so now I'm going to set the parent of the menu frame 
to this menu frames folder. So now you're probably wondering why why would you have a whole separate menu frames folder? Like couldn't you just clone this and put it under this GUI itself? Well, we could, but I think it's a lot easier to put it underneath of the folder and use this object called a UI page layout. Now these UI page layouts are actually really neat. I didn't know about them much before making this video, um, but they're really cool and they make life a lot easier. Basically what they do is they allow us to put as many objects underneath of the folder or wherever it's parented to. We can put as many objects as we want. Um, and then we can call methods on this UI page layout to navigate between them. So maybe if I had a bunch of frames under this menu frames object, I could look at this UI page layout and I could call a method that increments the current frame that is actually on, the current page that it's on. I and mean, whenever that changes, it's going to swap between them. So that's what's going to create our menu system of going, you know, next and back and being able to navigate between them. Um, so after we have that set, after we have the menu frame underneath of the menu frames folder, I want to set the name of it to the menu category. So menu frame.name is equal to menu category, just for organization. Um, I want to set the visibility of the frame to true, since it would be off screen. It just makes it a lot easier for it to come in. We don't have to deal with the different properties changing. Um, I want to set the text of the title label of this menu frame to the category. So I'd want this to say dessert for my desserts and drinks for my drinks. So I would say menu frame, frame title label dot text is equal to the menu category, whatever this would be. Um, and I also want to specify the layout order. So I was saying earlier that this uh, table right here gives us a little bit more configuration. Um, and basically all this is going to do is let us say which item would go first and which item would go second. And the way it does this is by taking advantage of this feature of the UI page layout called sort order. So if we set this to layout order, it's gonna look at this property of each of our frames called layout order. And so for example, if this property for me, one of our frames is set to 10, but for another one, it was set to one, the one that says one is gonna come first. So whatever the lower layout order, that means it's gonna come first and you're, when you're navigating through, like that's the order that it's gonna be in. So what we're gonna do is I wanna get wherever this menu category, the position in this array right here, whatever that position is, I'm gonna set that equal to the layout order. So for example, drinks would be in position one and appetizers would be in position two. So as we would create the frames, we would set that layout order and it would make it so the drinks would come first and then the appetizers would come second. So I'm just gonna say uh, menu frame dot layout order. Now I'm gonna set that equal to table.find is the function we're gonna call. The table we wanna look in is the menu categories order table and I wanna look for the menu category. So this is just gonna return one for this one, two for this one, um, and it's gonna, it's gonna let us set that uh, menu categories order. After this, we're actually almost done. We only have a few more lines to go. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna loop through our different menu items and put them into our menu items box right here. Cause right now there's nothing in it. You know, our, our customer sees that there are desserts but they have no clue what they are. So we actually need to put that in and we need to tell them what the different desserts are. So we're gonna say for index comma menu item in iPairs menu items. So we're looping through the different menu items. Um, and for each of these items, all I want to do is I just want to add it on to the text of that menu items box. So I'll say menu items box dot text is equal to the current text of the menu items box. Um, and then onto that, I'm going to use this symbol right here to add on something else. So this is the concatenation symbol. This is how you add strings, add text together. So I say two dots and onto that, I want to add the menu item right like this. And then I also want to add a separator. So in this case, I'm going to use the new line symbol, which is backslash N. So I'm going to have each item on a separate line, uh, but you could use a comma. You could put whatever you want here, um, just in order to make an easy reading experience for your players. So we can actually go into the game real quick to test this out, just to see exactly where we are. Um, and as you'll see, we have the ability to open the menu by equipping the item, and we can unequip it to close the menu. Um, but as you see, so it does create our menu and it says the different you know, drinks we have, it has our different menu items. But when we try to navigate between the different pages, it doesn't work because we don't have anything hooked up to these buttons. 
Um, so that's what we're going to do next. We're actually going to, you know, hook up functions to these buttons so that we're able to navigate through our different pages. So I'm going to say next button, which is our next button, and I'm going to hook into the mouse button click one click event of this next button. So whenever a button is clicked on that next button, uh, I'm going to connect it to a function. So I'm going to run a little bit of code. Um, and this is the awesome thing about a page layout. All we have to do to go to the next page, we don't have to do all this tweening and property setting. All we have to do is call the next method of it. So all we'll do is we'll say page layout colon next and that's it it's going to navigate to the next page um, and we can do the exact same thing for the back button I'm just going to copy that we'll say back button and then whenever that button's clicked whenever the back button's clicked we say page layout colon previous and we just call the previous method um, and to make it super easy we can navigate through the pages we can scroll through them if we'd like um, it just allows us to go through them so let's try it out we click one and we open our menu click next, we go to the next one, back, we go to the previous one, um, and we can see all of our items. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste of link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.